Hello, New Orleans. You're listening to The Sports Coma, your new number one podcast on everything Saints, Pelicans, and a lot more. And now, here's your host, Big Q and the Guys. Welcome back to The Sports Coma with Big Q and the Guys. And we're still talking football, man. We're covering the Saints draft. We covered signings. We covered uh, tenders. We covered uh, everything. Damn near everything except our boxing news we got coming up and a few other, well, a few other topics dealing with the Saints. Of course, we told you about Lamar Jackson, the Saints looking at them. And Cortland Sutherland, the wide receiver from SMU. Some people say he's a first round grade person, a wide receiver. Some people believe not, but the Saints taking a look. At suddenly, perhaps uh, in a draft. Of course, you know a quick dis- disclaimer on this fact that the Saints take a look at a lot of guys. Don't necessarily mean they're gonna draft them. So uh, you, we just kind of maul that around in the back of our brains while the Saints kind of pick and prod around uh, about these guys. Now, moving ahead, DC, we want to talk about an interesting topic dealing with Lamar Jackson. Of course, this was something that uh, that we spoke about, and I know uh, you wanted to speak upon it too. Is the fact that Lamar Jackson, uh, you a fan of my Lamar Jackson? I thank you, the captain of his uh, of his uh, fan club, and uh, uh, I think you get uh, 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 he gives you uh, I think he uh, gives you money for your power bill uh, because you've been, been uh, advocating for him to be a, a, a the first overall draft pick. Now we look at a lot of stuff that goes on dealing with uh, the in the football. Now they have a couple of quarterbacks that's listed ahead of Lamar Jackson. Uh, in the draft. Now you have guys like <laughs> you got the guy. Uh you got a few of these guys, man, that you got listed that's ahead of him. You got Sam Darnold. You got the guy out of uh Wyoming. You got uh Why Baker is Sam Mayfield. Darnold listed ahead of Lamar Jackson. No nobody can really explain that to me. Well I mean that's what I'm giving you an opportunity right now to kind of uh speak about that and, and tell us your point of view. Because I know you had an interesting point of view Uh, about the quarterback situation. And I know, and this is interesting to me because if you look at a lot of statistics in the overall play of some of these other quarterbacks, and you can say, well, Darnold played at USC. He had a, in in a big school program, Baker Makefield is a pretty good quarterback. No matter how you slice it, a little guy that can move around and win games. Like he's doing the worst thing they could say. The reason why he's dropping this is because he's cocky. I mean, that's the stupidest thing in the world. He's arrogant because he, uh, he, as long as he ain't doing stupid crap like uh, doing the, the money sign and all this foolishness like that other buffoon did, I mean, I'm not worried about him. The man is a winner. He hasn't done anything right. outside of uh, just talk his mess, and he's confident. You know, you don't have to be a damn choir boy to be the quarterback. So, I mean, come on with that crap. But they've and been. Wouldn't, wouldn't you want your quarterback to be confident? Don't we always. Not some talk of these milk toast people, I guess they don't want him to be confident. Uh, somebody who's an alpha male able to lead men and actually uh you know be a bit of a pioneer no we don't Mark want that. Jackson has all those qualities to me well it that well speak on it I'm gonna give you the mic right now talk about uh your order you have a order of quarterbacks that you want to talk about what is your say, QB order and give us and then tell us why you made that order the way it is Lamar Jackson will be number one basically because he's the most experienced out of all of them. He's the one with the most uh, pretty much young yards, most touchdowns, <laughs> the most potential uh, out of all the quarterbacks. Baker Mayfield will be number two. A uh, similar thing with Lamar Jackson. He, they, those two guys both have the hit factor to me. But Baker Mayfield and Lamar Jackson, I guess people consider them to both have this advantages. One has these supposed privacy issues. I don't know. When I watched R. Jackson seems to pass uh, uh, I guess adjusted the ball Baker Mayfield is too short so we know with the whole Drew Brees thing. Then I would say Josh Allen next uh, clearly because of his tape and his size. Then you can look at Rosen. Then I would say Sam Donald. Sam Donald is basically just there because of his build. Um, a lot of turnovers. Uh, he has a Brett Favre type mentality. He could be a really good quarterback, but you, I haven't seen anything on tape that sets him apart for him to be number one. Okay, so you said Lamar Jackson. You got Lamar Jackson first. Lamar Jackson at the top. Yeah, of not nine thousand something yards, almost ten thousand yards passing, hundred fifteen total touchdowns. Uh, probably what. 
three thousand yard rushing seasons. Come on, man. Yeah, you're absolutely and right. I, and a Heisman. And a Heisman and a run up to the uh, uh, to the Big teams Heisman. like Florida State. You know, like, and he's playing for Louisville. Who else is on that team? They had some players, but they Louisville wasn't isn't like this big college football program. Okay. Well, I mean, a lot of people said, uh, I think one of the guys, one of the uh, mock draft guys came out and said Sam, Sam Darnold is the is the top quarterback in his draft, uh, the guy out of USC. Now, Sam Darnold, three years at USC, I have his stats here, uh, 7,200 yards, 7,229 uh, uh, 72, to be ex- uh, exactly. He had 57 touchdowns versus 22 interceptions in the three years that he was there. And he only played – he didn't play as a freshman. He played 13 games. Uh, well, he did play some as a freshman here. I guess they redshirted him that first year. But uh, his freshman year, he uh, wasn't uh, – he threw for 31 touchdowns and nine picks that year for 161.1 rating. And then the next year, his numbers kind of went uh, – touchdowns went down. Interceptions went up from nine to 13. His interception touchdowns went from 31 to 26. And he averaged like 148 – uh, had a 100, 148.1 rate. Uh, but if you look at him totally, 72 29 on the yards, uh, 57 touchdowns versus 22 interceptions. And to me, when I look at his his uh, sophomore year, he looked better in his freshman year. Statistics say he had a better freshman year. So by any indications, he took a step back in his sophomore year, but yet he's considered the top man in the deal uh, in the uh, in the draft by some people. Uh, what do you what you think about that? Um, I think you you hit it dead home, man. This dude to me, it's very impressive numbers, but it just doesn't compare. Like um, to make him the number one pick, in my opinion. Um, again, it's a lot of upside with these guys, but when I put the tape on, it's only really two guys that stand out to me. So what that just that? jump off the screen. You That's look- uh, Lamar Jackson and Baker Mayfield. Now, Rosen, you look at Josh Rosen, three years at UCLA, 9,340 yards, 59 touchdowns, 26 interceptions in, uh, in his seasons with uh, UCLA. And he played as a freshman. He played 13 games as a freshman, six right. as a sophomore, and in his junior year he played only 11. But he had a better year uh, as a junior when he threw for 3,700 yards and 26 touchdowns. As a freshman, he threw for 36-69 and 23 touchdowns as a freshman. So uh, pretty solid year. But still, Josh Rosen uh, is is slighted higher than Lamar Jackson in those right. situations. So, you know, uh, that that's that's kind of uh, strange to me. But, and, and Lamar Jackson has double the output. Like, this guy had a, a what, 55 touchdown year? insane man these guys put up 26 touchdowns half of what he did and everybody's trying to convince me that they're better <laughs> well you know they it's always talk, they always talk about the intangibles like who, who are you gonna believe me or you are your lying eyes like gonna believe I, my, I think it's, you're gonna it's, believe it's you a racial dynamic eyes. tied to this um by him being a black quarterback actually with the stigma of running that's not really uh how they looked upon it and People were starting to adapt to it, but after you've seen Callan Kaepernick, Kaepernick and you've seen the, the opposite of that in RG3 with the injuries, um, so you have a lot of people talking negatively towards that, but Lamar Jackson can stand in the pocket and pass the ball. You can do that too. So it's, it's just perplexing, man. It's kind of sad. Yeah, and I'm looking at uh, Josh Allen's number when you break them down statistically. I'm looking at Josh Allen's numbers and his – career numbers he played three years at Wyoming lesser competition but uh, he finished with 44 touchdowns versus 21 interceptions on 5,066 total yards averaging 7.8 yards a a passing attempt and his last year there his junior year he played 11 games he had 1,800 yards uh, and he threw for 16 touchdowns and only six interceptions in 11 games. And they have this guy saying, hey, man, this guy is the real deal. Only one really good year was the 2016 year. In his sophomore year, he played 14 games. He threw 3,200 yards, 
and he had 28 touchdowns versus 15 interceptions. So some guys got Josh Allen sitting at the top of the draft over uh, Lamar Jackson. You put the numbers next to each other, don't correlate, but then they speak the intangible thing. Carson Wentz. (laughs) Carson Wentz' success has catapulted him somehow. Well, I look at it like this. You, you, same, same type of quarterback, kind of mobile, a little bit, um, makes these deep throws, and he played uh, triple A, and basically didn't play anybody. It's, it's, it's you, you put the numbers next to now. Baker Mayfield has tremendous numbers, so, uh, but he is even when he won the Heisman, he still is not considered the top quarterback out of those other big guys because it's always this right. dynamic to get the big guy with the big but arm. It, and it's a foolish strategy. You take a really good quarterback. That's how Russell Wilson uh, slid, slid so far. That's how Drew Brees got on down into well, the second Drew round. Brees, yeah. Right. So, I mean, we got to stop this stupid dynamic. If the guy could play football, the guy could play football, man. And I'm telling you, if you take Josh Allen over Lamar Jackson, you are making a serious mistake, and you're going to pay for it on the other side of it. I promise you that. But anyway, let's and, move and on. They will tell you a lot of people say that about Carson Wentz. Um the the guy that they took in Carson with Wentz the Los is, Angeles Rams is supposed to be uh, better than Carson Wentz. I actually watched Carson Wentz tape and I said, man, he's better than uh, golf. And boy, was I right about that. Well, you look at the system too. He couldn't help <laughs> he to have all those weapons, team, man. Uh, Super Bowl. So people people are gonna constantly argue that, but based on the statistics, the only quarterback that I think should be placed number one, and this, you know, if you want to pull teeth would be Baker Mayfield. He's the only other quarterback with a Heisman and that has stats that's even remotely comparable. And he's done it for at a high level for about the same amount of time. All right, well, we'll be going into our next break. When we come back, we're going to talk about nothing but boxing. We kind of ran out of time for that break. We'll hit it on the other side of the break and finish up on the show. Uh, we'll talk about Josh Wild, jo- Joshua versus Wilder as the WBO stepped in there and told Joshua, you have a mandatory defense that you have to take. You have to fight Povatkin. And if you don't, they're going to be an issue. So you got 30 days to make it happen. Well, guess what? Mandatories uh, do not trump unification. So in 30 days, you might see something solid happen here because of the pressure to fight uh, the the, the Russian fighter. So we'll talk more about that. Plus, we'll need some Triple G news. Also, Terrence Crawford, one of our favorite young boxers, has got he, he has a fight against Horn coming up, and we're gonna talk about that too on the other side. Of the listening to the Sports Coma. Thank you and the guys. Stay with us. I'm a Saints and Pelicans fan, so the only podcast I can get my fix is the Sports Coma with Big Q. The guy's intense, funny, and they always keep it real. Check out the Sports Coma with Big Q and the guys. 